Hello, my friends. Happy Sunday. Hope you guys have had a wonderful week. Have you? Yeah, did you guys do anything fun and exciting this week? I know you guys always do, so let me hear about it. All right. Hey, last week we had our study on love. Now, we could teach a lesson on love every single week, right? But um, last week was special because it was Valentine's Day, so we were talking about love. And, you know, we asked the question, how do we know how to love? And we're not talking about romantic love. We were talking about loving our friends and our family, right? And loving people the way God wants us to love people, the way Jesus loved us, right? And so uh, we, we asked the question, you know, how do we know? And I told you, all we have to do is look to the Word of God, right? Look to 1 Corinthians 13, and it told us exactly how to, to love God and to love others. Love is patient. Love is kind. But there was that other verse that we talked about. And as I read it this week, I was like, you know, that verse goes exactly with this lesson for this week, too. So we're going to repeat that verse, which I hope is okay. It's actually really good because we get to know it more. But let me read that to you as a verse from 1 John 4, 7. It said, dear friends, that's you and me, let us practice loving one another. Did you guys practice loving your friends or family this week? Did you? And then it says, for love comes from who? Love comes from God, right? He's the one who loves us the most. He's the one who gave us love. He is love. And then it goes on to say, and those who are loving and kind. Are you guys loving and kind? Are you? All right. Those who are loving and kind, they show that they are children of God. Don't you want to be a child of God? Me too. And so we're showing others that we're children of God just by loving others and being kind to others. We're letting them know that we are children of God. And then the last part, and that we are getting to know him better. That's our goal for every day, to get to know him better. All right. Well, there's a couple of guys in our story we're going to talk about today that really did get to know Jesus so much better. All right. So let's talk about them. They're called disciples. Do you guys remember talking about disciples way back last year at Easter? We're almost ready to start talking about them again. But we have been, even through these miracles, we've been talking about some of the disciples, haven't we? And what's it mean to be a disciple? You guys remember? It's a follower. Those who love and follow Jesus are his disciples. So any disciples in the room? Yeah, me too. All right, you and me, we're disciples because we love and we're following Jesus. So here we are. We're going to study out of our um, Child Story Bible by Catherine Voss, the one I love so much. And let me read this story to you. It's called Glory on the Mountain. All right. Three of Jesus' disciples seem to be nearer to him than all the others. Wow. Wouldn't you want to be one of the disciples that was so near to Jesus? Yeah, me too. All right. Peter was one of these three. It was he, you remember, who trusted Jesus enough to try to walk on water. Do you guys remember that miracle we talked about just a few weeks ago? Right. Peter, he looked out and he saw Jesus coming across the water and he said, Jesus, just tell me to come and I will. And Jesus said, come. And he stepped out on the water and he did it. He was walking on water because of his great faith in Jesus until got into his own head, right? He started thinking about, but wait, I'm only human and look at those waves. And he started to go under. But then Jesus said, he reached out to him and he got got him and he brought him back in the ship safely, right? All the things we could do if we had great faith. So Peter, he was very close to Jesus. Let's see. It was Peter who said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. That's right. That's what we should all be, believing that God is, that Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the living Son of God. All right. John, there's another disciple. He too was very close to Jesus. He seemed to love and understand Jesus better than any of the others. Wow. Could you imagine being called the one who loved and understood Jesus? That's pretty special, right? How do we love him? Spend time with him, right? That's what John was doing. The Bible calls him the beloved disciple. John wrote part of the Bible that tells us about Jesus. It's called the gospel according to John. All right. So there's a book in the Bible written by this same disciple, John, who loved Jesus so very much. 
This book of the Bible, the Gospel According to John, is so full of love to Jesus that many people like it better than any other part of the Bible. Wow, it's a precious book of the Bible. Have your mom read part of that to you today. All right. There were many other times when Jesus kept these three close to him. Oh, James. I almost forgot about poor James. James was the brother of John. And he was the third disciple who was closest to Jesus. And so all the disciples loved him and were close. But Peter, James, and John, they were the ones that were really close. And we're going to see, even in our next um, study, when we start studying Easter, we're going to see that Peter, James, and John have a couple other times when they are special and they get drawn out to be close with Jesus. All right, let's go on with our story, though. One day... Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him up on a very high mountain. So they went off. They were separate and went together. They were there going to see some very strange and holy things. Hmm, I wonder what that could be. While they were there on the mountain, a change came over Jesus. His face shone as bright as the sun. And his clothes had become dazzling white like the new fallen snow. Do you remember that snow we had just a few weeks ago? Do you remember how bright and white it was in the sunshine? So think of Jesus' face, just sun, just like the bright sun shining so bright and his clothes so bright and white. There was heavenly majesty on his face. Moses and Elijah came down from heaven to talk to him. So you guys remember talking about Moses a lot, right? But that was years and years and years before Jesus was walking on earth, right? So he'd been up in heaven and he came down from heaven to talk to Jesus. While Peter, James, and John watched in amazement, a bright cloud covered the whole heavenly group. Out of the cloud came the voice of God himself. And this is what he said. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. All right. So here's God saying, here's the son that I love so much. Listen to him. He wants, God wants the best for us. And he knows the best for us is to listen and follow Jesus. All right. So here he is saying, here's my son. I love him so much. Listen to him. I love you. So I'm telling you, listen to him. If Peter, James, and John had any doubt whether Jesus was really the Son of God, they could doubt no longer. There's no way they could doubt when they heard God's voice and they saw Jesus shining as bright as the sun. They saw him clothed with heavenly glory. They heard God, the Father, speaking from heaven, saying, This is my Son. I love him. Listen to him. The three disciples fell down on their faces and worshiped Jesus, as they should, right? If we are in the presence of Jesus, we fall down and worship. We lift our hands up to worship. We bow down to worship. Could you imagine being there that day and seeing Jesus just glowing like the sun and hearing his father say, this is my son, listen? Of course we would fall down and worship. After a time, Jesus came and touched the disciples, telling them, Do not be afraid. So he's saying, you're seeing something glorious. You're seeing something holy and wonderful. Don't be afraid. Looking up, the disciples saw that the cloud of glory and the two prophets were gone. So Moses and Elijah had gone. And the cloud that um, had the voice of God, it had gone. So it was just them and Jesus again. They looked up and Jesus stood there alone. On his face was the look of peace and light. Wow. Think of looking into the face of Jesus and seeing peace and light. Wow. How so wonderful. As they went down the mountain, Jesus told the three disciples not to tell anybody about what they had heard and seen until after he had risen from the dead. So he's telling them, look, it's going to happen soon. I'm going to go, I'm going to die, and I'm going to rise again, just as I've told you guys. But don't tell anybody about what they just saw, about 
Jesus looking like the sun and about God's voice coming in. Don't tell anybody until after that, because that's when I want people to know and to see and to hear and to feel that everything that you can describe to them and tell them. Okay. Indeed, the disciples did not want to shout the story out. They felt deep in their hearts that they had seen something very special and very holy and sacred. It was. It was too precious to be spoken of lightly. So they weren't going to go down and just say, hey, guess what I saw, guys? No, they were going to keep it to themselves. And then after Jesus dies on the cross and is risen, they're going to say, He is risen indeed, and let me tell you what I saw. Let me tell you what I heard from God, all right? Never would the disciples forget what they'd seen. I wouldn't forget. Would you forget if you saw something that glorious? I don't think you would. Never again did Jesus seem to them only a man. They never forgot that glorious figure, his face shining like the sun, and his clothes so dazzling white. After this, to them, Jesus was the Lord of glory. He was the Son of God, the Lord of glory. So what do you guys think? Would you like to see something that wonderful? I would. I would love to see Jesus face to face and see that glory. And one day we will. All right, let's look at some questions about this. Um, Do you guys remember, what did Peter, James, and John do when they saw Jesus glowing and looking like the sun? Do you guys remember what they did? That's right, they worshiped. And we should worship him now. Even though we don't see his face, we know. We know in our hearts because we have faith. We have faith, and so we should worship him. Make sure you're worshiping him. Make sure you're taking time daily just to call out and praise the Lord and worship him. And then what did Peter, what did Jesus tell Peter, James, and John not to do? Not to go, he said, don't go and just tell lightly this is what you saw. It's so wonderful, it's so holy. Wait till I am gone and then tell everyone what you saw. How did this change Peter, James, and John? You remember what it said in the story? It said they would forevermore always know that Jesus was Lord. They would never think of him as just a man again, right? Because he looked like a man to them. But when you've seen him glowing like the sun and his clothes white as the snow, yeah, they would never look at him the same. They would always know he was in a man's body, but he was the holy son of God. All right, that changed them forever. How does it change you knowing this? How does it change you knowing that Jesus is the son of God? I hope you guys will spend some time, talk to your moms and dads about it. Spend some time just talking about who Jesus is, who he is to you personally. And guys, I know that you are going to spend some time worshiping God, knowing that he loves you. Remember, God loves you so much that he sent his son. And as we get closer and closer to Easter, we're going to spend more time just talking about the wonder, the most beautiful miracle of all, that Jesus died and rose again, and that he did that for you and for me, because he loves you so much, and I love you so much, and I will see you next week. Bye, guys.